is going on everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel and how good does it feel to be a Rangers fan right now? You've got the old firm coming into Europe, doing what we do. <sighs> like This run up to Christmas for us is always brilliant, it's just can we keep it beyond Christmas this time? Now for today's video, you are used to me talking about football and football reactions, it literally almost was a game of water polo I was going to be sitting here reviewing. We always knew this was going to be a bit more of a difficult game, like obviously playing against a little team that don't even have a shot on target. I mean, Roof had more shots in his own half than that team did against us in the full game, so yeah, it was just a bit of a different level of the team we were caught against today. On a serious note, I feel like it would be disrespectful when we start this video any other place and talk about Roof's goal and well, you see a bit like, obviously it has to be goal of the Europa League, if not so far, definitely for the full season. Like, not only the shot, the hold up play, bringing it forward, bodying someone, hitting the one with going around the other three players we took out of the game with that, and then went, you know what, have some of that. And then you see my celebration at the start of this video, where they were all booing him, obviously playing for our rival club, and he's celebrating as well, he gives it the A for Anderlecht, and then he just gives them the big fat L, and you've seen what it sparked after the game, but do you know what I loved about that thing after the game, right, we've won the game, so you don't want anyone sent off on that unnecessarily, but it shows the fight that this team having, when was the last time you seen a Rangers team fight for each other like this, and that at the end, that's the part that I love to see, a team that don't want to, they don't take any nonsense, They're, they stand up for themselves, and this is what we want, and how long has it been, it's so refreshing to see a team that just won't get bullied. So going on to talk about the actual team's performance today, McGregor, you thought he would have had to stand up off his deck chair from the weekend and actually put in a shift tonight and it wasn't worked too much, but again, huge credit to the defence for that, even with another change in the back line, but more than two times he looked troubled, it wasn't even saves that he had to make, one was a Superman punch off the bar where he was having a moan at the ref about it and then he's got booked for moaning, like, I guess possibly the only thing I could think of is, is what he said to the ref, otherwise I don't know why he's been booked for that. No other time he looked half towed was the header from the near post which did go over him and hit the bar so we were lucky to get away with that one but apart from that he's came out, caught a good few crosses, good performance for the goal of the day. Going into the back four, starting with Tav, arguably man of the match, scores a goal, gets a clean sheet. It's hard to argue against it because I feel like the full team today wasn't Again, like the game at the weekend, it wasn't a perfect performance. Well, it was certainly a good performance because we've got what we came here for, three points, but you f really felt like we had another gear or two, possibly even three gears to go up tonight if we needed it. They're back to Balogun came in for Holanda, which I don't know if it was a slight knock. I've not seen anything about that, but he was obviously fit enough to make the bench. Golton, solid again, especially one of his tackles in the first half was absolutely brilliant. Last man. Balligan, no nonsense, done what's needed. And then Bonn, unfortunately, off. i never seen that it was from an actual collision, which you think is actually a worse sign. It's usually worse when a football goes down off the ball, or it's something, usually means some sort of tear rather than just the knock. So hopefully, fingers crossed right now, I've not heard anything about that, that he's back sooner rather than later. But I thought Big Calvin, come on, done the job today, wasn't worried about him coming on at all. Thought the middle three were excellent today. Kamara and Afu continuing the great on a form. Jack being able to step in for Davies, who's obviously got a well-deserved rest. It's great to see that type of squad depth. Now, you're not worried about who's come in. Like Bonn at the back, you've got Zungu as well. Once he's up to speed, then it's great to see the squad shaping up like this. Front three of Hadji, Kent, Morales. I thought Kent was pretty decent today. Not one of his best games, but disciplined. Done what he had to do. I thought Hadji, I tipped him to do really well today. He could have done a little bit. I don't think he was bad, but it was just... Another one of them in the middle performances with Hadji and I thought he was actually quite lucky not to get sent off with a challenge. There was one, I think if it was VAR, he would have been sent off. It was, he's tried to block the ball, so it wasn't like really malicious intent, but he came down stud right in the opponent's ankle and it's folded him and I think if there was VAR, was like, I'm really glad that VAR wasn't in this yet because I think he was quite lucky to get a yellow. Touching on Morelos, who's really hot and cold amongst the fans right now and I sometimes defend him when he doesn't score goals because that's not all what his game's about. Like, the whole the weekend, he was involved in the second goal heavily, creating a lot of things, dragging defenders out of place. But tonight, I understand if he gets criticism. I think he's possibly the one Rangers player that I would accept getting criticised for tonight. His touch was woeful. So many... He, the man could add a hat-trick tonight. There was one chance especially where you used to see Morelos, sometimes you're going, oh, why didn't he pass it rather than hitting that shot there? But... The one chance he had, which was so clear to shoot inside the box, you're going, shoot, and he's passed it the one time you're not expecting him to do it, and 
I don't know what it is about him, but it's just hot and cold right now. I don't want to say he's down tools, because some games he is brilliant, but I just, I've just i just got that sneaky feeling now that his head is starting to think about other options. Now, before this game started, I didn't really know what to expect, because I'm looking at Stanley's team sheet and I'm going, there's not really any notable players there you've ever really heard of, but of course you don't want to underestimate them. They're here at this level for a reason. Like Everyone is a half-decent team, but I still fancied us to go on and win, but I just didn't couldn't predict the actual scoreline, but I think they actually surprised me with how good they were at retaining possession. They caused us a few dangerous moments where a lot of them were zinged balls in behind their fullbacks where they were getting on at the end of things, and of course they did hit the bar twice in the first half, albeit one with a Superman punch. I think another thing I loved about today's game was the aggro that the fans brought. Like, I've missed it so much. They had a banner up in the stadium today saying football without fans or nothing. I think it was like... 30% of their stadium's capacity that they were allowed in today and it just brought that little something extra like I was doing my live watch along and you can feel yourself getting into the game more because you can hear the opposition's crowd reacting and oh, to say that we all miss fans is an absolute understatement. So coming out for the second half you're happy that we've got that in clean sheet and I thought there's no way that Anderlecht could have kept up the intensity that they were doing towards the end of that first half because they were really pushing to try and get that equaliser at home but the rain started and boy oh boy did the rain start. It was literally at a stage where you may as well have worn flippers rather than football boots for this game but I had a massive part to play for the second half. It genuinely was getting to the stage where I was starting to worry about the game getting called off. Like I don't even know what happens in Europa League at that time of a game when you're one up. Is it like a full replay? So I'm, I'm starting to get a bit panicky in my mind because you're literally the ball was getting played. People were, the literally the puddles were tackling people. Like there was one that I remember, I literally celebrated like a goal because Anne liked running behind and the, the puddle stopped it and the guy sprinting away past the ball. And I could literally have, have seen the Celtic Twitter and everything typing it already. Oh, the puddles are in with the Masons, it's the Mason puddle. And then, and just when you thought the puddles were on our side, we had chances where well, Kent was in and the puddle was tackling him. Literally, the puddle was snaker than Stephen A. Smith today. A couple of the standard players as well were taking the water on the pitch too, literally, where they're diving all over the place, literally thinking it was a swimming pool and... Jacko had a few of them, a few choice words for a few of them dives where they were trying to win penalties for their only way to get back into the game because their tactic turned into, which both teams to be fair turned into, which is maybe where Ruth got the practice from, it literally turned into a game of longies at the end because you could not play the ball on the ground so Ruth certainly won that game of longies with that finish. I was surprised that it wasn't it that came on with 20, 25 minutes to go, it was Aribo and Ruth who came on, again I'm glad that Ruth came on now so that we could watch that moment of brilliance but it and I thought would have suited that game for the high balls that were happening just to hold it up because it really was so sloppy at the end no teams could do anything it wasn't through faults of their own it was literally it was at the point that like, you were watching a Sunday league game Aribo did look sharp from the small moments of him we've seen in the game it's so hard to judge in then type of conditions but I'm so glad to see Ruth and Aribo back and the squad is looking so so strong right now I was actually surprised that Aribo did get risked with the pitch being so bad because you thought it would have been easy to pick up injuries but of course Gerard watches them training and feels like they were ready for that and they looked at today and I can't wait to see them back fully fit and hopefully try to get in that starting 11 again. But that is all that we're going to talk about in today's video though. Let me know your thoughts on the game down in the comments below. Who was your man of the match? And if you haven't done so already, it's totally free. Hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up to help the channel massively. And once again, thank you all for watching. We'll be back again Sunday with another video against Livingston where hopefully we're talking more positive things, Rangers. We'll see you in the next one.